What is up, Humanoid Nation? So today's video we're reacting to is by the a and &E channel, Court Cam. Court Cam has some crazy wild shit on there. Uh, go like escaping prison, and that's uh, for 21. Uh, judges in their goddamn mind and fighting lawyers. So why not react to this one? Court Cam, lawyers behaving badly. Let's see what kind of Saul Goodman shit we're going to have here. Top five moment. Let's do this. We're off now to Raleigh, North Carolina, and the Wake County Courthouse. Visitors, attorneys, and employees of the court are entering the building and going through the main security checkpoint. Watch closely as this man picks up his personal belongings from the container. Whoops. Oh, I forgot his wallet. He okay. has no idea. He just dropped his wallet. And now he heads to the elevators. It's not until he attempts to pay a court research fee on another floor that he realizes his wallet is missing. Inside, $1,600 in cash. Oh, damn! Fortunately for him, someone returns the wallet to another security checkpoint in the building later that day. Unfortunately for him, it's missing the cash. So yeah. security does some sleuthing. Saul Goodman came around. Moments after he drops his wallet, this gentleman makes his way through security and apparently becomes aware of the situation. Oh look, a wallet. He and the wallet head to the elevators, just missing the wallet's owner. Damn, this is some like movie type shit. Looks like he's checking out the contents. I can pay for my bar exam. He goes up to the fourth floor. A short time later, he's back in an elevator. You can see what looks like the wallet here in his folder. He gets off on the first floor and turns the wallet into security, minus the cash. He tells them he found the wallet in a bathroom. Security is able to track him down and arrest him in court. What was he doing in court? Yeah. <laughs> Defending someone. Because he is a defense attorney. He's convicted well, of I guess he needed the money. Larceny. And Defense result, attorneys don't make shit. Fired from his job, no longer allowed to practice law in the state of North Carolina. Oh, damn. Imagine going through all that, studying to be a lawyer, and then getting barred from lawyering because he stole a wallet. Wait, is it everywhere or just wait? Up, no longer allowed to practice law in the state of North Carolina. Arrangements are made to pay back the $1,600 to its rightful owner. Next, we go to Damn. a child custody hearing in Las Vegas, Nevada. The plaintiff is Shelby Bachman, and the defendant, Jonathan King. The couple are arguing over visitation rights for their two-year-old son, Joseph. The issue is King's unpredictable work schedule. The attorneys are Don Procopius, and for the defense, Machancy Kramer. Because my client is a UPS driver, his schedule, though, is not a set schedule. It varies. So he has to keep her notified of when his schedule is changing so that she's aware of pickup. She has told him now if he's more than half an hour late, he forfeits his entire weekend and can't see the kid. Has Joseph gone weekends that he would have expected to see his father without seeing his father? He has not missed one weekend. Not, not one. The threat was made. Not I didn't one. ask you if the threat was made. I asked if it happened. You the let threat me was made. that it was happening. No. My client has worked with him at times that, that it was till Saturday morning that he there, picked there up. There is a problem the, here. After hearing from both sides, Judge Sandra Pomrenz points to the lack of cooperation between the parents. What I see here is parties not being creative. But these two need to be adult enough to say, okay, this happened, where do we go from here? 
But Your Honor, and I agree with you. And so what she's done is on these times where she's worked with him, but then I think it was within the last two weekends. I thought you said you agreed with me. I do agree with you. Okay, see, that listen time. to me. You're not going to be. You're going to be done with this case when this case is over and these parties are divorced. They'll never be done with this case. Okay. So rather than complaining to me, it's a discussion with Mr. Prokofiev is being creative. It appears the judge has struck a nerve with the defense. My client has come up with all kinds Don't of solutions. Don't raise your voice to the judge. And it, it comes down to what mom wants is what mom is going to demand. Okay, I don't buy that. Well, Your Honor, that's how it what is. I, what I'm telling you is, have you discussed this issue with Mr. Prokofiev? Yes, I have in the hallway. Okay. And has it been a matter of making demands or saying, what are we going to do? No, it's a matter it of been, calling been my matter. client a Oh, oh, oh. oh damn. Oh, yeah, that's not going to go good for you. That's not going good for you. Things begin to get personal, and the judge has a few words for Kramer. I do have experience with you using inappropriate language. And you know that I would admit it if I had done it. And if I was going to do it, I would have done it to her face. You know what? You want to be a sailor? Fine. Go be a sailor in your private life. But don't be a sailor in my court or in my cases. I didn't. And Again, I don't judge people with sailor language because I use a little sailor language, but only in my private life. Not in my courtroom. Not to a, a litigant. Not to an attorney. Any professional. I don't do that because that's not professional. That's and what then, I just said. I warn you. One of these days, the State Bar is going to catch up to that. Because if you read the rules, there is an ethical rule about fairness to opposing counsel. I know that there are also rules about treating people equally without regard to race, ethnicity, or oh, gender. Oh, you're going to get I find you're it gonna highly get it. objectionable that anyone complains about my language. Because I know all kinds of male attorneys who have no problem picking up the phone and screaming cuss words at me. So if I am outside there where my First Amendment rights are in full effect, I will say what I choose to say. To look on this guy's face, he goes like, well, I'm fucked. I need to get a new lawyer. This ain't going good. Just, <laughs> he is not at all happy. Look at him. When I choose to say it, and that is my right in this country. Are you done? But after a few minutes of civility, the counselor starts up again. We've spent, what, five, ten minutes talking about nothing that is relevant to this case because I, as a female attorney, he just looks broken. This guy's not going to say shit because he goes like, let her dig her own grave. <laughs> He's just going off and this security guy, the bailiff, whatever the hell, is waiting for the word from the judge out on her. And who's this random person in the court? The only witness? Just You just need a witness for this? and being chastised over language that men feel free to use every single day and they do you are giving me a headache because you're yelling and i don't like having well, i'm being attacked your honor no you're not sit down counsel i'm done hearing from you unsatisfied with the party's solutions the judge orders an evidentiary hearing which means the parents will submit evidence against each other and the judge will make a ruling. In a child custody case, it can get ugly. Your lawyers are gonna be painting a picture for me in court. And it's not gonna be a great picture of either one of you about the other. Even after the judge makes her decision, the defense tries one last argument. Oh, come on. I have nothing more to say and I don't want to hear from other, either one of you. I'm going to set the trial. I understand that. So sit down. The couple's evidentiary hearing is postponed multiple times and has yet to be heard. Most attorneys will tell you it's a pretty smart idea to stay on the judge's good side when yeah. arguing a client's case. What's not Always a good idea good is to accuse said judge of serious judicial misconduct. And you know there was jury tampering Wednesday. You saw it yourself. The man dropping that bombshell is Kentucky oh, 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 oh. Commonwealth Attorney Larry Rogers. And on the receiving end is Judge Vernon Minyard. And he's not receiving it well. Let me tell you something, Mr. Rogers. You're coming to my house and tell this to me? Boy! <laughs> he's gonna go off. 
Thank you I've never listening. tampered with a damn jury in my life. And don't you ever accuse me of that. Do you understand me? I heard you, Your Honor. You better understand me. The hey, don't talk. Don't talk you back. You better understand me. Your Honor, there is an investigation. I will let you know. Will you investigate me all you want? Not I'm not scared of anything because I have never done anything wrong. You said you did. Rogers is actually referring to another case he and the judge are involved in, which includes allegations of jury tampering and corruption in Russell County. He just said if you become a witness, you have to recuse yourself in this matter. I don't know what I'd be a witness for. All I did was the, there were some jurors that had to be out. Yell me all you I'll yell all I want. This is my court, and I'll do what I want. This is my you house. understand me? And that, but I am going Go sit down. I don't want to hear anything else from you. Turns out the allegations had no merit, and Rogers himself would later be accused of prosecutorial misconduct in several cases, though those claims would also be dismissed. Damn. This is my court, and I'll do what I want. Next, we're in Denver, Colorado, for the deposition of attorney Robert Abrams. Abrams' firm was added as a defendant alongside their client in a lawsuit between two former business partners and are being sued for fraud, conspiracy, and aiding and abetting a criminal by the plaintiff. Good morning, Mr. Abrams. Do you understand why you've been asked to give your deposition today? No. To say tensions are high in the room would be an understatement. Asking the questions off camera is the plaintiff's lawyer, Tom Wurge. And on the other side of the table is Abrams' lawyer, Neil Sullenberger. Neil Sullenberger, that that's a great name. Abrams and Associates is a defendant in a lawsuit that's going to trial next month? Yes. Have you had your deposition taken before? I think so. Why does he look like a younger version of Rip Torn? He has the hair. He has the facial mustache. Looks like a young Rip Torn. Yeah, Rip Torn, wait. Rip Torn from Men in Black? That's who I'm thinking of, right? Not the singer, the actor, Rip Torn? Yeah. When Dead. have you had your deposition taken before? I don't recall. How many times? I, I don't recall. You have, you're sitting here today under oath, you have no idea whether you've been deposed before? I've answered, answered form. I've answered that question, objective form, move on. Object to form is a quick way to object during a deposition and, in effect, ask the attorney to clarify the question. Have you been deposed? Object to form. Object to form. Oh, Move to certify so the question. If you feel that I haven't answered, Object to form. Then you can move Object to form. We're going to go ahead and stop the deposition at this point and dial the special master. Good morning. Yes, we are in the middle of a deposition. Special master, court appointed attorney who can make evidentiary rulings on the spot. Oh, okay. Position this morning. But when the special master isn't available, plaintiff's attorney, Tom Wurge, asks the same question again. Uh, Mr. Abrams, have you had your deposition taken before? And gets the same answer. Objective form. That's Come on, dude. Point. You need to answer the question. The yeah, question was answered. Excuse me, have her read it back. Yep. Mr. Abrams, this is not your deposition. Please don't harass me. No, I'm no, not harassing we're you. Move for sanctions I'm asking you, you to, to not answer going the to question. Allow he just her. answered the question. As the heated back and forth continues, Abrams, who is a witness, begins making his own objections, which a witness is not allowed Hearsay. to do during a deposition. Hearsay. I'm going to raise, move to strike, find it objectionable, and then move for sanctions for Can't do that, my guy. I'm, you're not a lawyer or a judge. Mr. Abrams, I feel quite confident that if any sanctions are entered in this matter, it's going to be against you. Objective form. For continuing you're to saying. obstruct and not answer Objection. any of my questions. Objective form. You cannot object. I just did. You cannot. Okay, you just did. What is, what is this, I'm kindergarten? Can't do that. I just did. Unblemished. <laughs> If you laugh at me one more time, we're going to walk out. We're going to move for 30 D3 sanctions. We're going to move for harassment sanctions against you right now. Things only get worse. We're going to go for this. Oh, I'm going to give this to you. Harassment statements. What the hell? Okay. First, when the arguments take a Good luck personal with that. turn. We're going to be here for a long time today if you do not answer my questions. I can't even get through my initial questions that's because your, you are being we, so obstructionist. That's today. because you're a weak lawyer. You have us a down God damn. Ask us fraud questions. Okay, let's ask a couple more questions. Mr. Abrams, what are the pills that you just took? Objective form. None of your business. 
None of it is a course business. Then what are those? What are those other pills? Object to form. Uh, object to privilege. None of your business. You're saying. But I can tell you that if you took some of these, they would help get some of your weight off. Mm. I can tell you that. Oh, meth. Oh, this man just admitted that he took meth in court. Oh wow! It'll take the weight off. That's what meth does. Referring to when you called me fat when you walked in here. Objective form. If you want to raise your weight problem, Mr. Ward, with the jury and with the special master, please do. But we're not the ones that are sitting here in that condition. I am going to end this deposition now. Okay. Mr. Abrams, we're going to continue it while we seek intervention of the special master. Right. It's clear that you are not here to answer any questions today. We are going to move for sanctions against you and your firm for your conduct during this deposition, and we will take that up with the special master. And we'll represent your conduct during this deposition. Please well. do. After reviewing the transcripts from the deposition, the special master issued an order for sanctions against Abram. His behavior during the deposition, along with other misconduct in the case, would ultimately earn Abrams a nine-month license damn, suspension. License. Well, you have no evidence. Put something in front of me and we'll answer the questions. You have nothing. Our next story takes us to Clark County District Court in Las Vegas for a kidnapping trial. Oh, He's damn. here. He's in custody. There's just one problem. The defendant's lawyer is nowhere to be found. Can you check and see if he's going to join us? Uh, that's kind of a bad sign. You're on for, oh, for kidnapping, your lawyer doesn't even show up, even he knows you doesn't want to represent you. After a 90 minute delay, defense lawyer Joseph Caramango finally arrives in the courtroom. Judge, I was heading uh, east on Sahara Drive and I was rear ended. And my car was undrivable. Sounds drunk. Really sounds drunk. The person who hit me took off. And, uh. Hit and run. It was a hit and run. And, uh. Here I am. I'm gonna tell you, be honest with you, you don't look right this morning. I say he's drunk. 100% he's drunk. That's why I'm concerned. Judge, my neck and my back is killing me. My neck. My back. Go forward. My neck and my You don't think you need medical attention? I think I do. I think I do, Your Honor. I may have suffered a concussion, Your Honor. Because you hit your head? Because of the whiplash, Your Honor. I've or, had multiple concussions before. Yeah, concussions. You've had multiple concussions. Yes, Your Honor. But I feel like I feel like I can go forward. You know what? Can I just see yes. everybody back in chambers? Behind closed doors, Caramango meets with the judge and is assessed by a courthouse nurse. In the record, the fact that Mr. Caramango is back in the courtroom, he has been checked out by the nurse. Now, the nurse said you told her you got hit from behind and then you hit a car in front of you. Okay, you, you left that part out with us. Yeah, I did, Your Honor. So you also hit a car? So it was a double hit and run. I guess. The <laughs> Oh my god, double hit and run. I gotta make it to court, my guy. I gotta represent a dude. Oi! Judge is becoming increasingly suspicious of Caramango's story, and the prosecuting attorney isn't doing him any favors. My observations were observing him that there was clearly something wrong with him. I noticed he was slurring his speech. I noticed he seemed unsteady on his feet. And when actually Mr. Caramango came back into the courtroom, he seemed very unsteady on his feet as he walked by and actually ran into our counsel table. Going, eh, this is wrong. He's definitely drunk. Things only get worse for the defense lawyer when the judge orders him to take a blood alcohol test. I think you have a concussion. I think you're dazed and confused and can't tell a straight story because you're too intoxicated. I admit that I did have drinks last night. Last night? I lost Try my this morning. About two weeks ago. I've been under a lot of pressure, Your Honor. Okay. I'm not aware of that. So and if you came to court intoxicated, you have a problem. Do you understand me? Your Honor, I can represent as an officer of the court. I am. <laughs> no, you can't. You can't be a representative officer of the court when you're drunk. You cannot. Not intoxicated. Okay. So just go ahead and blow. Let's get it over with. Court has it. You want to show me? Okay. I am stone sober. 
Oh, what is it? Mr. Care Mango, if I was you, I would just be quiet at this. Okay. You so are trashed. Point oh seven five. Even though his blood alcohol content is slightly below Nevada's .08 legal limit for driving, the judge has had enough. I have no desire to ruin your reputation or anything. We'll deal with it. I'll give you an opportunity to get it together. Um, but at this point, I cannot absolutely allow an attorney to proceed. The judge declares a mistrial, and Joseph Caramango's law license is put on disability inactive status. Damn. He's prohibited from practicing law in the state of Nevada and has not petitioned the state Supreme Court for reinstatement. Thanks for being wow. a fan of Court Cam. I'm trying to subscribe. Get it, get, get it back to so we can practice. Well, I guess you must have a... Well, he did say his grandma died two weeks ago and his life's in, been in the shit since then, so... Kind of bad. I kind of feel sorry for him now. Like, if he's not trying to uh, appeal it, then yeah, his life must be in a downward spiral. Hopefully, this guy can uh, get better. Hopefully, he can get better. Because, yeah, losing your grandmother definitely fuck with your head. It's like, uh, yeah, I've been there. It's like, uh, you're, you're not right. It's, it's kind of hard to say. But, yeah, I do feel bad for him. Like, if he. Hopefully it gets better. Hopefully it gets better. By the way, that's it for now. Human Nation, Humanoid Freak Out. Bye. Pasito a pasito, suave, suavecito. Nos vamos pegando poquito a poquito.